In this quick tip, I just want to talk to you about a couple of keyboard shortcuts for making sequences out of clips on the timeline. Now, sometimes I like to divide my edits up. I like to have each individual scene as a sequence, and then I'll put those into a master sequence. Obviously, you can do that just by making up lots of sequences and putting them in there. But it's quite nice if you've got a bunch of clips on the timeline to just make them into a sequence. And there isn't anything immediately obvious in Edius to do that. So, you know, you right click on the clips and there's nothing there. You right click on the ruler bar, there's nothing there. There's nothing in the menus. But there are actually commands in there to make this stuff into a sequence. And you might not even know they're there. They're in some keyboard shortcuts that aren't assigned to anything. So I'm going to go up to settings and then user settings, keyboard shortcut. And here you can see a list of all the possible keyboard shortcuts. And there's loads. There's more possible keyboard shortcuts than you can put on your keyboard. So there's a bunch of stuff in here that does things which is very useful that you don't know you can do unless you put a keyboard shortcut on it. Now in particular, I'm looking at sequences here. So I'm going to go up to the filter and I'm going to type in the word sequence. And it brings up all the keyboard shortcuts to do with sequences. So the obvious one, create a new sequence, which is Control and Shift and N. But you can see you've got all these things like add to binner sequence between in and out, add to binner sequence selected clip, create new sequence in track, and convert in and out to sequence. So what do these things all do? Well, to find out what they do, you've actually got to add a keyboard shortcut. For example, let's go to this one. Add to bin as sequence. I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to assign Alt and S to that. It's complaining that Alt and S does something else. Well, I don't care for the moment. I'm just trying this out. Alt and S is now assigned to add to bin as sequence between in and out. Let's go to this one and assign shift and S. So I've now assigned those two to keyboard shortcuts. Let's see what they do. They are fairly obvious from what they say. If I choose the first one, the first one was add to sequence between in and out point. So I'm going to mark an in point and an out point, And I'm going to go to Alt and S, which was add to sequence between in and out. Bosh, I've now got a new sequence up here. I double click on it, it's got all those clips in it. So basically I've taken all those clips and made a new sequence out of them. The other one, which I assigned to Shift and S, was add selected clips. So in this case, let's do Shift and S. Again, another new sequence. That just has that one clip in it that was actually selected. Let's go to the other two. Convert in and out to sequence. So let's set that to Shift and S. Create new sequence in current track. And I'm going to go Alt and S. I'm going to mark an out point, Shift and S. Now this one does something completely different. It's created a sequence in the bin, but it's actually taken everything between the in and out point and it's put it in a sequence which is above and above it. So that's the sequence in the bin. It's also straight away on the timeline. Really love this one because it's basically nesting the stuff. Now if I go inside of it, you'll notice it's put all of those clips that were between the in and out point into that sequence. It doesn't do the sound, it only does the picture, which is a slight difference to the other ones because they made up bins which had the sound and the picture in. Of course now it's above all this lot, it's completely blotted it out. The other one which I assigned to Alt and S is just create a new sequence in timeline. If I do that, it will create a new sequence for me, but it creates an empty one. You see it's popped in there, it's gone in at about five seconds long. But it's created a completely empty sequence which I can pop into and then put things into. It actually put the sequence wherever this little V was. So let me get rid of that sequence at the top. Let's put the V up there and let's do that again. Let's do an Alt and S, create empty sequence in timeline. It's put it up there and I could actually grab hold of these clips and then copy them, go into it and then paste them and I've got some clips in it. Sequence has got longer. But I find those are actually very nice, useful commands because they're just different ways of taking a bunch of clips and whacking them into a sequence. I particularly like this one, convert in and out to sequence, because it is basically nesting the stuff. I mean, take this clip, for example. This is a clip. It's some old Hi8 footage of me when I was an awful lot younger. I'm actually trying to do something with that to clean it up. Now, I'm going to use a plugin to clean it up called Neat Video. I found Neat Video in particular cleans this up really, really well. But the thing about Neat Video is you put it on a clip, but it actually has to go before everything else. It has to go before the layouter because that's the way it works. And in this case, well, I've used the layout to take my old 4x3 footage, standard definition footage, stretch it out to fit an entire widescreen thing. So as soon as you put the Neat Video on there, it nafs it up. 
because the neat video has got to go first. Now I could just rearrange the order and put the neat video first and now it's cleaned up the video but I do find that if I resize it and then neat video it I get a better result. How would I get around that? I will take that clip, put the layer out onto it, I've got my thing stretched, I'll then mark it in an out point, use that create a sequence and add it to the timeline thing which then kind of nests that clip with the layouter on the timeline. I can put the denoiser on there now. It doesn't matter where it goes, because what's actually happened is because it's nested, it now sees this clip as a full high def clip. Yeah, originally it was a standard def clip that had been stretched, but because I've nested it, it's now seen as a full high def clip, and then it denoises it after the resizing. And that basically comes up with a better result, in my opinion. What I get whenever I take my really old stuff is a huge amount of noise in all these areas here. See all this fuzz? Just a bit naff. And here we have a quick comparison of the two. So this is my neat video cleaned up shot, and this is my not cleaned up shot. There's a slight twitch going on here because it's actually interlaced, uh, which doesn't display wonderfully well on a computer screen. This looks a lot better out on my video output. But you can see the nice job it's done of cleaning that up. But I find Neat Video does a better job if I've scaled it with Edius first. Then generally what I'll do is I'll render that to put more effects on it. So this is where I will use Render and Add to Timeline. Takes that, renders that up into a new clip, which then bakes that noise reduction in, and then I can put the more effects onto it. The main thing was there, I just needed to nest it so I could stick the neat video on there. There are lots of times when I just need to nest stuff. You know, maybe I want to take all these clips here and then put some kind of effect on the whole lot. Well, again, great. Mark the in and out point, and as long as you've got a keyboard shortcut set, you can make up a whole sequence of all of that lot in. And now I can apply some kind of effect to that. For example, I could use, use a Vitacene filter on that. A Vitacene. LE is coming free with Edius until the end of the year. So you could put it on there and just put a little bit of white diffusion maybe to blow out the whites using Vitacene. And I've managed to do it to all those clips just by very simply nesting them using my little keyboard shortcut. There are other keyboard shortcuts that you don't even know do stuff. There isn't a list anywhere of what they do. You've got a list in the manual of all the keyboard shortcuts that are assigned. There are others which aren't assigned. And the simplest thing to do is to look through the list and try some of them out. I might do some more videos in the future just pointing out some other ones which are useful that you might not know there at all. But those are ones I really like, the ones for making sequences out of clips which are actually on the timeline. Now don't forget you can visit my website www.dvctraining.co.uk where you can see more information on my full-blown 30-hour EDIUS tutorial which you can buy and download from there. Plus, you can order EDIUS and EDIUS upgrades directly through my website. And don't forget, till the end of December, you're going to get a free copy of Vitacene 3LE with it as well. You can follow me on Facebook for the latest news and information. You can contact me, david at dvctraining.co.uk. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos about EDIUS and other editing programs. Anyway, I hope you found that useful and I'll see you next time.